Next on the list, let's talk about this one. Have you heard about this? This is fucking sad. Look at this story. Melbourne man denied 30,000 Australian dollar refund after purchasing fake shoes from a teenager. Oh my God. And the fake shoes you purchased, bitch, you guessed it, Jordan 1 Dior's. You guys know about the Jordan 1 Dior's, right? A Melbourne man who spent nearly 30,000 Australian dollars um, on shoes he now believes to be fake had had these case thrown out by a tribunal. He was seeking a refund of for seven pairs of sneakers, some of them ultra rare shoes produced jointly by sportswear, uh, sportswear and fashion giants Nike and Dior. But the state legal authorities found he had knowingly bought the shoes from the boy who was only 17 at the time. That meant he could not sign contracts and was not liable for the refunds. In October last year, the the estate took the 17-year-old student um, and his father to the court to ask for a refund. Four of the pairs were limited edition shoes. Big up, NJ Ranger. Appreciate you, brother. Stop him. Those are the nuclear codes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Rolling eyes face. Rolling eyes face. Crying face. <laughs> exactly. Stop him. This is the nuclear code it's like a it's like a scene from it's, from it's it's a scene from fucking born supremacy isn't it right jason fucking born like what the fuck is going on here bro it's a pink stanley cup relax but big up injury ranger appreciate you brother um continuing the man said sums ranging from three thousand dollars to ten thousand dollars for each pair of the jordan dior shoes as well as two thousand dollars for a pair of nike um sneakers in various colorways after receiving the shoes the man told the vcat that they noticed the defects and contacted the seller for a refund but did not receive a reply and went on to contact the teen's father fucking snitch he claims the boy's father accompanied him to a local authenticators who immediately recognized the teen as a fraudster and scam artist by name the teen and his father disputed the shoes were unauthentic and that he could check the sneakers or fries while authenticating them the seller's father also told the tribunal that he only became involved in the situation to protect the safety of his family after his son was chased through a shopping center dismissing the claim in december um, VCAT member Catherine Metcalf said that the father's involvement was not enough to suggest that he'd been responsible for the refund and the agreement between the man and the student but as the seller was underage when the shoes were sold he was not legally able to enter into a contract to to make any refunds under Victorian state law that's so fucking sad the guy got scammed because he literally did a deal with a fucking teenager fucking hell had an agreement been entered into was said I was 18 years old, he might have been different. Uh, the, the, so this makes me tell a story of the time that I got scammed for a pair of what the dunks. Do you guys remember those? Luckily, I had two pairs, but I got scammed, unfortunately, for a pair of um, Nike Dunk SB what the dunks, right? That I queued up for for like a day as well, by the way. I bought them at fucking Nike Town. Slam City Skates had a fucking um, pop up event in Nike Town in London. I queued up for most of the day to purchase these What the Dunks with my hard earned money. I ended up selling them, I think, on a forum. I think I sold them on like, on like Soul Collector. Or maybe I sold them on like, I think Soul Collector on Nike Talk, one of them. I sold these What The Dunk pairs, but the person I sold them to scammed me. And it's the first and only time I got scammed. The way I got scammed is the person said, no, they sent me a screenshot of what looked like a receipt for the transaction on PayPal. And I was new, I was so green back then. So I sold them and the person then sent me a screenshot of what looked like a pay, PayPal transfer. Obviously it wasn't. And I sent the shoes. Then I went to go check my PayPal and there's no money in it. But I already sent the shoes and I was so fucking tight. And obviously the shoes went. I actually saw them get tracked. They landed somewhere in New York and basically the money was gone. I couldn't even hit the person's fucking PayPal and get the money back. It just fucking went. So I was fucking fucked. And then since then, I haven't really sold shoes online anymore. I usually do a lot of like, cash in hand deals um, all the time with people and stuff. And, you know, meet people up at fucking car park lots and stuff and sell the shoes. But that was the first only time I got scammed. The person sent me a screenshot of the shoes um, of a PayPal payment that didn't go through. And back then, I think I sold them for like, I think I sold them for like $300 or something. Nowadays, what the dunks i think they go for like yeah they go for like 30k and i've got another pair actually in my collection i've actually actually got another pair so i'm actually fortunate i don't i don't wear them or anything but that's probably a rainy day fund but they go for like 30k they go for 30k so i've got these um i think i've got them in a size 10 as well i've, I've actually got them in a size 10 somewhere um so they're available but the only issue is that nowadays replicas are so good and replicas are so prevalent that there's a ton of replica what the what the dunks available now in the market 
probably a lot of the ones available now are fake but i've actually got a real pair which weirdly enough hurts my real pair you know because people will think my real pair is fake <laughs> you know because there's so many fakes available there's so many good ones like the replica game is so crazy that it's almost impossible to tell the reps from the reels and what's really interesting is that nike i think are involved in a lawsuit with StockX at the moment and one of the stumbling blocks in the lawsuit is that nike refuses so far to detail how they can tell a shoe's fake or not they don't want to let they don't want to tell and the reason why because there is no discernible way to tell really and truly if replica factories get the replicas right there's no way to tell things are fake or not because unfortunately most reps are made in actual nike factories so there's this whole you know conspiracy theory out there that nike kind of inadvertently you know props up the replica market because it adds to the whole hype and the allure around certain shoes because if they wanted to kill the replica market they'll just make more shoes make them more readily available get rid of this whole like you know um, in um what you call it manufactured scarcity and it completely kills it but they want cues they want pandemonium they want people to get stabbed they want fucking craziness and that unfortunately also you know pushes the replica you know market because there are people out there that don't want to do sneak they don't want to fucking queue up they don't want to enter raffles they just want to buy their shit so they'd much rather just buy it and nowadays with leaks as well people are now leaking shoes and sending them to fucking china or these rep factories to get reverse engineered and they're now making sometimes replicas replica shoes or limited edition shoes are dropping before the actual real release you heard that sometimes replica fake shoes are releasing before the actual real thing has dropped so you then get a market that's flooded with loads of fakes with loads of b sam with loads of like b samples with loads of you know maybe some someone got seeded a pair and they're selling them so it's it's very hard to know you bought the real thing that's why the only way you can know you bought the real thing is to purchase a shoe when it releases or to buy it off somebody when they purchased it in the store with a receipt that's the only way you can know if the shoe that you bought is actually real anything else you're just flicking a coin which is why i understand why the replica market is what it is and i've and i've always said myself when it comes to reps i'm mostly a guy that will always try to buy authentic shoes first but if I really want a shoe and I can't buy the fucking authentic thing legit, I'm just going to go to the rep factory. I'm just going to go to fucking, I'm going to hit up some of my girls and fucking, um, um, what's, what's it called? It? Is it Shang Shui or whatever? What's that factory called? Is it Zhang Zhang or whatever? They have their factories. I've got what the name of it is, the particular area. But I'm just going to hit up one of these fucking ladies. I think they, they're usually called weird names like Kim or something, right? You hit them up, whatever, and you get your rep so I can send to you because at the end of the day, all I care about is the look anyway. But if I can't get them legitimately, i'm definitely gonna go hit up some of my replica factory so i definitely understand yes it's shenzhen shenzhen that's it shenzhen not wuhan we got the fuss of wuhan no no i don't want wuhan stuff but yeah um big up the replica factories big up them big up them let's see how much a size 10 goes for 8.5 is going for what 30 grand how much does a 10 go for Forty-three thousand. okay shit holy shit Holy shit. I'm have to consider selling them. I'm gonna have to consider selling them, mate. Forty three thousand pounds. <laughs> That's insane. Holy shit. I'm gonna have to consider selling them then. I really might have to consider selling them. That is a lot of fucking money, isn't it? But again, it's good for a rainy day fund, you know? I don't have any savings really. So the only savings I do have are some of the fucking limited edition shoes I have. So maybe that's what I'll do. I'll just save them for a rainy day, you know? And then when I'm really damn bad, right? <laughs> I then start before I sell before I sell my asshole, I'll get rid of my water dunks. But yeah, big up that, big up that. Absolutely crazy scenes. Absolutely crazy scenes. <laughs>